Guys, when I found out that Artifacts Uprising was going to be one of our sponsors, I lost my mind because I've literally done all my holiday shopping through them for the last couple of years, and the gifts are always a massive hit. Artifacts Uprising is a Colorado-based company that sells premium quality, customizable photo goods for your digital photos. They want to help you preserve your meaningful moments this holiday season. Whether you want to say I love you with the perfect gift, display favorite memories in your home, or connect with loved ones throughout the year, they have a product you can personalize. I've got in photo books, calendars, and scrapbooks, and they are always simply beautiful and always a hit because of how personalized they feel. Like I mentioned, I've gotten many gifts over the years, but I kind of wanted my own photo book about having that physical memento to put in your home. I decided to make a photo book of me and my partner's first year together, and we have just so many photos, but it was easy to go through them, and the book came out beautifully. And who knows, maybe one day we can share it with our future children to show them how young and crazy their parents once were. Artifact Uprising makes it easy to tell your story. Through the end of the year, dateable listeners can give Artifact Uprising a try and get 20% off for new customers or 15% off if you purchased before. Just visit ArtifactUprising.com and use the code DATEABLE through December 31st. For us women, that time of the month can be the worst. The cravings, the bloating, and PMS. Ugh. Like I mentioned, I've been using Hormone Harmony to balance my hormones hormones, and it's really helped with relieving my mood swings and just not feeling so off. Hormone Harmony contains science-backed herbal extracts called adaptogens, which help the body adapt to stressors like hormonal changes that happen naturally throughout a woman's life, which is why Happy Mammoth, the company that created Hormone Harmony, is dedicated to making women's lives easier. It has zero sugar and is gluten-free, dairy-free, non-GMO, and third-party tested. The product is so popular, a bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. For a limited time, you can get 15% off on your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use the code DATEABLE at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use the code DATEABLE for 15% off today. Hi, I'm Yui Xu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Dateable. Here we are. We're always happy to have you with us, either in spirit, in the audio world, in the YouTube world, or just in some third dimension, <laughs> fourth dimension. I'm just grinning looking at our big ass posters that we got created that (laughs) have our, (laughs) that's what we can call them, big ass posters. They have our book for anyone that's not on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, you can check us out. We'll be airing this full episode. And you can see how we blew up our book cover into posters that we got from Artifact Uprising, one of our sponsors. It's so hard to do visuals because we were thinking we're going to get these big ass posters. And then now I'm looking at it on our screens. They look small. Like they don't, not- they don't look like big ass posters. And these are 16 by 20. Is that the size we got? Yeah. But That's if you look huge. compared to the book, which is you can see it like my, it's tiny. So it's true. It's just like the optical illusion of it yeah. being farther back. Sorry, this is kind of a tangent. But my <laughs> my parents have been fishing recently because they're like they're so obsessed with like trying to catch fish. And they've gone on three fishing trips without any fish. And this recent one they did, they finally caught some fish and they took a picture with the fish. The way they held it out in front, it looked humongous. I was like, oh my gosh, this can feed them for a few meals. Then they showed me a picture of the fish compared to the worm that they caught the fish with. (laughs) The fish was just barely bigger than the worm. That's how small this freaking fish was. Like it was the size of their hand. Okay. So I think this like this optical illusion thing never really take this at face value. How big you think something is. There's so much I could add to that. (laughs) (laughs) Are you thinking about our decorator? (laughs) I did think though, you know, the infamous fish photo on apps. I bet it's the same thing. I bet people caught this tiny ass fish. Yes. And they're like, ooh, let me make it look like I'm so, you know, big and mighty that I caught this massive fish. And also women don't give a shit. (laughs) I know. So, uh, you know, next time you take that dick pic, really think about (laughs) 
How far you want that to be? I was like, are you going to say fish pick or dick pick? Maybe they could just be. It's the same. It's the same. At this point, I'm confused. Which one we're even talking about? It doesn't matter. They're the same. I think that's the underlying of the fish pick to try to show, you know, you got the BDE. That's my take. (laughs) This is all kind of related to what we want to talk about in this episode. Believe it or not. Look at that transition. Believe it or not. We're not talking about dick pics or fish pics, but about the fact that we jump to conclusions about everything we see and everything we experience. We take everything as like, yeah, this is how it is permanently. When now we just have proven to you that what you see on screen, on your phone, on your monitors, it may not be the reality of what you think it is. And as you all know, we have a book coming out in January. <laughs> How to Be Dateable is our baby, our pride and joy to your in the making. Yeah. It was a labor of love, that's for sure. But what we wanted to do this season is, you know, our book is really under the foundation that we believe that everyone is dateable. It's just modern dating that's setting us up to fail and getting in the way. And there's certain things that are trapping us, and it's kind of the byproducts of dating culture. And, you know, from our almost 10 years of doing this podcast, talking to thousands of daters, we were able to identify what those traps are. And we want to, you know, give a bit of a preview into those four traps so we can really set up people to think about them. So when the book does arrive in January, you can just dive in. Be like, okay, I get this conceptually. I'm ready to go and like learn how to get out of it. And why does this apply to you is because you are listening right now, probably because there's something about dating that's making you unhappy or you're frustrated by it or you feel challenged by it or maybe you've even given up on dating and you're looking for answers. And these traps, when we were writing this book, we were like, holy shit, a lot of these traps that you may not even be aware of because you're just part of this machine now of modern dating. You know, you're just like chugging along and we want to peel back the veil. And I don't even know that that's not a saying, but whatever. We're going to want, we want to. I understood what you meant. You know. (laughs) Just just lift that fish up. (laughs) (laughs) If If we could have a list a glossary of all the phrases that we make up on the show, we would be we would be golden. We have our own encyclopedia. But anyway, the point the point is to show you that a lot of these traps, especially this one today, you may not have even perceived it as a trap. You thought this was just normal. And we're here to tell you this is not normal. It's just one of the traps of modern dating that's setting you up to fail. Because modern dating, too, it's like an ecosystem within the larger culture that we have, too. And a lot of the things in larger life outside of dating bleed in to dating, which we'll go into. Yeah. And throughout this, we will be sharing some of our personal stories because of course, Julie and I have experienced this trap yes. time and time again. No one's immune. <laughs> no. And nobody ever told us this was a trap. I thought this was so normal. But now yeah. we know. and But we'll share some of our own experiences, which I'm sure a lot of you will resonate with. Yeah. So I'm excited to get into it. Before we do, some announcements. At Dateable Podcast, that's where... You find us on the internet, howtobedateable.com. That's where you pre-order the book. We include some of the endorsements we got. So thank you to all the fellow authors and past dateable guests that wrote just nice words about how to be dateable and how it helps readers. So I love getting these because it shows like from people that get it. And it's just like validation to us that we're like on the right track. So it makes me really happy to see these come through. And you can also see photos of us with the book. Including one of Mojo <laughs> with the book. <laughs> Mojo's my dog. Don't worry. That's not a fish or a dick. So it's just. <laughs> oh, God. No one pet. wants that with the book. <laughs> that would or be epic. Or someone does. Maybe someone that does. That would be epic. It's like my dick knows how to be dateable on a side by side. And then you just have to measure how big our <laughs> book is. <laughs> I was going to say, like, do we give a free book to someone that did that? Or. 
Is that just... <laughs> We've received one very unwelcome dick pic in oh our lifetime. God, we have. In our email? Email. And yes. And we weren't expecting it either. It was from a woman. <laughs> it was from a woman sharing a dick pic that she had gotten. It was like, whoa, okay, did you really need to do that? So we are not welcoming any dick pics into our inbox. We're just suggesting that that could be funny for someone else. Thank you for setting that tone. <laughs> Also announcements, we have our new Dateable Dish newsletter that is going out weekly where we share life updates, just random facts. I think I shared a couple weeks ago that I have been binging Southern Charm and I know I'm late to the game, but I'm so freaking obsessed with that show and my partner has been gone all week and I have been like going through season after season. Is that why I got that text from you (laughs) yesterday that I did not respond to because I was like, no. I have not watched Southern Charm. One of my best friends that you know, <laughs> literally our texts back and forth are all about the show. That in Summer House. That's our text string. I get the two mixed up. Is it like part of the same production company? It's part of the same ecosystem. And they're all Bravo shows. There's crossover. Okay, got it. Yeah. Fun fact. When I lived in New York, I used to film videos for College Humor. Do you remember when College Humor existed? Oh, yeah. Okay, it doesn't anymore. I'm sure it doesn't. It's like a dinosaur. It's extinct. But I did a video with Ariana Maddox. Oh, wow. Before she became Ariana Maddox. And it was a spoof of a Britney video. And she played Britney which now you can see, right? It's perfect. Yeah. And she was in a bunch of college humor videos. And I remember her just saying like, I'm moving out to LA. I'm moving out to LA. And she did. And I didn't realize. I thought she was moving out to L.A. to become an actress, which I think was the original intent. I didn't realize she ended up on a show about restaurants yeah, (laughs) or as a server. But that's her claim to fame. This was a tangent. (laughs) This was definitely a tangent. But but your email list, that's the takeaway. (laughs) But also related to this episode, do you think people's fame and success happen overnight? And I can tell you, I knew Ariana Maddox when she was doing college humor videos, trying to be Britney Spears. Come on. We're going to get into it about why we expect things to happen instantaneously in dating. But before Before we do, let's hear a message from our sponsors. You know what season we're entering into? Cashmere season. Oh, yes. With the cooler months ahead full of pumpkin spice lattes, wouldn't it be nice to be in a cozy cashmere sweater from Quince while sipping on said pumpkin spice latte? Quince is known for their Mongolian cashmere sweaters from just $50, but also have beautiful leather jackets, cotton cardigans, soft denim, and so much more. I personally have the softest pair of biker shorts from Quince that are just as nice and comfortable as the really expensive brands, but like half the price. See, by partnering directly with top factories and cutting out the cost of the middleman, the savings are passed on to us. So lucky us. Get cozy in Quince's high quality wardrobe essentials. Go to quince.com slash dateable for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash dateable to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince dot com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. This is a weird thing about me. When I went to summer camp, we were told to take really quick showers to preserve water. It's something I've carried into adult life. And now I'm like, maybe there is a merit to taking longer showers to unwind and relax, especially now that I've been using Osea's new Andaria Algae Body Wash, which has transformed my shower experience experience into a tropical paradise. UA and I always talk about this stuff like we cannot get enough. It's the citrusy scent that just smells so freaking good. Just thinking about it makes me want to take a shower. What I love about it though is how it leaves my skin feeling soft, smooth, and revitalized. I find it to be a much gentler cleansing experience than traditional body washes. And that's because it's pH balanced with a hydrating formula. So upgrade your shower with clean vegan face and body care from Osea. Get 10% off your first First order site wide with code dateable podcast at ocmalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. Head to oseamalibu.com and use the code dateable podcast for 10% off. So, what's the problem? Clearly, we want things to happen at lightning speed. We're calling this the expectation of love on demand, where we feel like Everything should be instant. It should be effortless. We should get it when we want it, how we want it. Kind of like how you'd order something on DoorDash or an Uber. Like we just live in this instantaneous culture. 
And we give ourselves so much credit thinking that when we know, we know that we can go on a five minute date and just know right away if this is the right person for us. We can know within a minute if this could be a long term partner. You know, we give ourselves a lot of credit. But that's the expectation that we have with dating. We hear this all the time from daters like, should I go on a second date if there wasn't fireworks on the first date? Or I'm just not sure. Like, is it worth keep going? Like, these questions we always seem to get. And even just thinking about my relationships I've had, all of the ones that turned out to be something were maybes in the beginning. Yeah. I don't think I was like, oh, hell yes about anybody from like the get go. But the ones I did have the hell yes feeling about, they were also like, got the hell out of here <laughs> pretty fast. Those were the, my microwave relationships, the ones that like heated up real quick and then evaporated just as quickly. Yeah, exactly. So why do we do this to ourselves? Mm -hmm. We're not allowing connections to develop. We also get ahead of ourselves too, especially with the hell yes that you were talking about. It's like you have a hell yes on a first date. You're like already imagining five years down the line with them. I think that's the problem. It's like the maybe zone, which is the reality that most people are going to fall into. We're like, oh, we got to move on. We got to keep going. There's so many people out there. We got to find that person that meets all of my imaginary checklist, all of this. Like, let's keep going and jump from person to person. But that's what keeps you on that dating hamster wheel forever. And it makes us overlook people that could be good partners. But then, yeah, on the flip side, when we feel like we found that person, that immediate you know, spark in chemistry. We imagine this life with this person when we barely know them. And when we polled our listeners, 80% of them said they struggle with getting ahead of themselves when they like someone. Wow. 80% of you all said that you struggle with getting ahead of yourselves. And you're admitting that. Like some yeah. of you may not even be admitting that. So 80% of you are aware of that and admitting it. That's huge. And I know for a long time, I struggled with this so much. I would go on one magical date with someone and all of a sudden I'm like canceling weekend plans, yeah. you know, in hopes that we would see each other or putting my life on hold because I'm like, huh, this could go somewhere. I'm going to have to like really see this through with this person just after one date to reshuffle my life around just for this one date. What? I was so guilty of this. Like, I would believe I was in relationships that weren't real relationships, mm. what we're calling imaginationships, mm. because I think that is what I was doing. I was seriously in a fantasy. Like, I was not looking at facts. Like, I was like, I haven't seen this person in three weeks, but I'm obsessed with them. And this is definitely going to be the one that works out. It's like, well, no. And then, you know, we had a listener actually write on Instagram that she had a story that the guy was far more into her than he really was, and it really caused her to miss the red flags. And I think that's very common and a problem with getting ahead of ourselves is that we don't actually evaluate if this person is a good partner for us. You use the word obsessed, and I think that's such a toxic term. I've seen all these Instagram memes are like, find someone who's obsessed with you. Don't. Yeah. You don't want someone obsessing over you. You don't want to be obsessing over someone else because. What you're obsessing over is not the reality of who they are. It's the idea, the potential of who they are. And then we end up making up these stories that we get obsessed with. We're actually obsessed with the story, yeah, which gets very freaking toxic. And that's when we get ahead of ourselves. I think the other part, too, is let's say both people actually are on the same page and getting ahead of themselves. It's a relationship that's developing. We think this is good because it's like the turbo relationship. And of course, there are some relationships that move fast that are healthy. I'm not saying that there aren't. But we've also seen the ones that just like the microwave ones that burn out and, you know, they go at turbo speed and then you realize that you haven't laid the actual foundation necessary for a relationship because you just want to skip to the end. Yeah. And then you get to the end. You're like, this is actually the end, the end, because <laughs> this yeah. can't go any farther. We forget that in dating, it's not about skipping ahead. It's about building that foundation. We got a crazy story from someone on Instagram, actually, that they, you know, met someone through a matchmaker. They had a long distance relationship for six months and his girlfriend wanted to get married. 
and have kids because she was already 37. He had to move across the country to do so. So they basically like fast tracked everything. And then they went on a trip together like eight days later. And then he said within a span of 24 hours, she ended things. Mm. I feel like the foundation just clearly wasn't there. Of course, we don't know all the details, but when it gets so fast tracked and then just ends immediately, like that to me is like, it's a quicksand, right? Where we have a relationship that's not built on anything steady. Well, I think it's also because in newer relationships, you're still in that like, oh, everything's great. Everything's wonderful stage. And then when you have one conflict, you go, oh, shit, this relationship is not perfect. Yeah. If it's not perfect, then it's not the right one for me. I deserve better. And then you end up running away. That happens a lot. I mean, I think that's like very clear why this is problematic. It's really just like two ends of the same spectrum, but on the polar opposite, right? It's like we're not giving enough attention to people and letting things develop or things are just like going quickly and then just burning out. And both of those scenarios, you're not in touch with how you really feel about this person. You're just, you know, living in this fantasy world or living in this future world, which are both the same because they're not reality. It's the quick yes or no. That's what we want. Yeah. So why is this happening? (sighs) Why do we do this? So fucked up. (laughs) We just live in such an instantaneous age. You know, it's the digital age. It's technology. We think everything happens overnight. I mean, just even like I was turning on my computer today and it took a second longer and I was frustrated. I'm like, how could you not boot up any faster? My partner has such good patience and it makes me realize that I am... (laughs) <laughs> the opposite mm. of the same way. Like if it like, takes like a second longer than I think it should, mm. I'm like, it's messed up. It's broken. <laughs> like if I don't get a text back like immediately from someone, I'm like, oh, they're just not interested in doing this. And this isn't even in dating. This is like in professional life with my friends. Like I just feel like I'm conditioned to believe that everyone is attached to their phone and I'm the number one priority and they're going to be responding to me ASAP. And if they don't, everything is doomed. That's the message. And that's really freaking unhealthy. Yeah. And also, we expect all of this to happen without our effort. Like on dating, you expect you go on one date. If it's magical, then it magically progresses. And you're just going to hit all these milestones without putting any effort. Yeah into it. And that's the problem that we're facing of like this expectation of love on demand is that we think like, oh, yeah, if two people like each other and there's quote unquote chemistry, things just naturally progress. So how do we counter this? Mm. Because I feel like living in this world is really hard. I feel like the slowing down is so necessary, but it's so difficult to do when you're like constantly attached to instant connection Mm. or what you perceive as instant connection. That's really not. Yeah. Well, I mean, slowing down is easier said than done, but it's like checking back in (laughs) with ourselves, right? And just doing a reality check. Do we really, in reality, expect this to happen overnight? We don't. We just think it should in this digital age. Yeah. And what doesn't help is social media. We see people getting into relationships, it seems like overnight. Seems like overnight people are falling in love. (laughs) It seems like people are finding the loves of their lives every day, every second. Everybody's finding loves of their lives except for you. And you're wondering, why isn't this happening for me overnight? Because we don't see the middle part. We don't see the process in between at all. Yeah, I think it's really helpful for me with dating and relationships to look at other parts of life that took time. Yeah. Like building a career, like building even the relationship with your friends, right? Like it didn't happen immediately. Years maybe went by till you actually were like so close that the person felt like family. So I think taking that and just being realistic a little more about the time necessary has helped me ground myself a little more with relationships. Why do we not apply the same friendship principles to relationships? I know we've asked this on our podcast before, but you don't meet a new friend and then just expect to be besties the next day. You also know that it takes time and effort to nourish that relationship. And sometimes you go, I don't have the time or the energy to do so, right? We're so realistic about friendships, but we expect relationships to just magically 
do its thing. I think another thing that I've been trying to do is slow down my pace in life a little because Mm. I think that bleeds into everything else. For instance, I feel like I used to always just take Ubers everywhere because I would get there quick and I wouldn't waste time and I would just move. Mm. And now I've been trying to take the bus a little more. And part of it's to save some money, but also is I kind of been enjoying it. Because it's like this downtime, I can take in the environment, like with San Francisco, especially you're like going up hills, you get the views like in Uber, like you're just whizzing around, you don't get to take anything in, Um, maybe listening to a podcast or like enjoying some of that space, I guess, to breathe. And I'm trying to do this like in life. So like, I can try to move this over to other areas where I have these expectations for everything to just be so fast. Oh, I love that. That's such a great way to slow down your neurosystem, right? To just be like, okay, I don't need to be everything everywhere at once. And I don't need to get there that fast. What am I in a hurry for? I still remember when we went to South by Southwest and I went to that panel about singularity and how AI is going to take over the world. And Ray Kurzweil said, When we get to singularity, or even when AI starts being more prominent in this world, the whole goal is to buy your time back as humans, but also be very intentional about how you spend that time. And I will always remember him saying that because sometimes we're like, no, this will save me time. But then you have to think, save time to do what? Right. Right? What are you spending that extra time on? And I think in dating, if you're like, oh, I got to do this fast so that I can spend more time getting to know people, so I can spend more time on a date instead of packing them in, so I can spend more time understanding how I feel in this moment on this date, and then all the other stuff that like doesn't contribute to that. Yeah, I can do those faster. I can, I can fast forward those. I mean, I think a big part of it comes down to this feeling of like not wanting to waste time. Yeah. Like time is Uh this like such a precious thing. But we also have to be like, okay, what is an extra day? What does that really do? Like, is it really wasting time to like give someone another hour to respond back? Like, instead of getting impatient and feeling like this, like I just end it, it's not going to work. Yes. Then you know, what about all the beautiful things that could happen in this relationship if they just didn't respond for an hour because they were in a meeting or doing something else? Like having a little more of that patience really helps. I love that. And I feel like we might want to spend a little bit more time marinating in this thought because many of you think about wasting time and you think what's wasting time is, oh, you spend all this effort getting to know someone, they end up not being a good fit. You think that's a waste of time. I would argue what's a waste of time is those five-minute coffee dates that you pack in and one day you have like six coffee dates and you don't get to know anybody in depth. You just walk away feeling completely overwhelmed and tired and drained. That's a fucking waste of time when you could have spent those seven coffee dates or whatever on one person, even if they're not a fit, you're getting to know another human being at a deeper level and understanding who you are in relation to that person. I mean, the date interview, we talk about this a lot, where the date feels more like an interview. That is so common in modern dating because people just want to make sure they're not missing any red flags. Like they don't want to waste their time on people that might be wrong for them. So by doing this, you're like not giving any form of connection at all. Right. And it's like what you were saying, you're just spinning your wheels going on these dates that are not set up for success at all. Would so much rather go on less dates, but like give someone the time and attention to actually like have a chance of moving this forward and building something. You'll feel so much more fulfilled that way to have in-depth connection with anybody does not have to be romantic. You would feel fulfilled if these were just friends that you met out in the wild. It's just somehow we think, oh, because it doesn't have the romantic glare. This is a waste of time. I think that's another reason, though, why we want everything to be so instantaneous, because everyone views modern dating as so freaking miserable nowadays. Yeah. Because of dates like this, because of the way that we show up, it's no longer fun. It's no longer magical. It's no longer romantic. So we just want to be freaking done at the end of the day. Yeah, we're just so like results oriented. 
and we don't even know what the result is. It's like, no, we just got to keep going. I still think I remember one of the most magical dates I've had in recent years was when I was in Greece. I went on a date with someone I knew there was no future with. He lived in Barcelona. We were never going to meet up again. But we had this wonderful night of saying, okay, we only have this limited time. Let's get to know each other on a deep level. Let's really set each other up for a wonderful love life with other people. But we're going to have this like really awesome night. And I knew it was contained. But at the same time, I also knew that I wasn't pressured by, oh, is he going to call tomorrow? Am I going to see him like around the holidays? Am I going to meet the parents? No, all of that was lifted and I didn't expect anything to happen overnight. And it was still one of the most fulfilling dates I've ever had, even though it's counterintuitive to say so because there was no future potential. I actually think if we had more dates like this and we were able to repair our relationship with dating to like believe it's fun, believe it's enjoyable, believe it's magical, then the pressure would be off a little to just be done. And you'd be able to slow down because you're like, you don't need to get out of this situation. You're fine being where you are. And then you would actually get to know people because you don't have that pressure to just get done, move on. Yes, I like that. I really like that way of thinking. Because, you know, the people you encounter in your life even if there's no romantic connection, everybody does something to open your heart. I truly believe this. And everyone's doing a little click, click, click to you when they meet you, only if you give them enough time. And one day your heart just fully expands and you're ready for that person. But in the process, we see these people as like a nuisance. <laughs> you know, stop yeah. wasting my time. Get out of my way. You know, I got to find this person. No, everybody's doing their job in helping you along in your love journey if you let them. Well, I think it comes down to societal expectations of what love looks like. Like we think it just goes quick, right? Everything's fast. Like the rom-com effect. You meet someone. You immediately fall in love and you sail into the sunset forever. But also like love is blind in TV shows that you meet someone for a couple days, get engaged, spend six weeks with them and get married. Like that is a crazy accelerated timeline. And, you know, I think like logically we're like, yeah, of course, I'm not thinking like that. But all this seeps in. So we feel like we have this like this feeling of like everything needs to be just rushed and needs to be done once you meet that person. I know. And I often hear this too. I just want to be in a relationship already. Yeah. I just want to be in the relationship phase already. But you know what? People who've been in relationships for like 10, 15 years will say, I just want to be dating. <laughs> I just want to be in that dating phase. Everything's just better because you don't have it. But you know, there's a ton of people who wish they were in your shoes right now. I mean, I know some of this timeline stuff comes from the biological clock and other things, but I do feel like it's kind of enforced by society because like it became like 30 and then 40. It's like 40 is the new 30, but now freak out at 40 instead of freaking <laughs> out at 30. But like, where is this coming from? Right? Yeah. Like, who is setting this rule? Yeah. <laughs> people who are not in dating. Mm. Those are the people setting the rule because they're miserable. They're like, come join us already. We're going to make it feel like so urgent and scarce. And it does feel that way sometimes when you think about like, oh my God, it's like musical chairs. Yeah. If I don't find my chair now, I'm right. out. <laughs> you know? Right. And then a lot of you, we've been told because, you know, we talked about the love crisis. A lot of you are taking yourself out of the game because of it. Like, oh shit, I can't find my chair. And when the music stops, <laughs> I'm not going to find one anyway. So I'm just not going to play this game. Well, if you're not in it, you're not going to have any connections whatsoever. Yeah. I think the final piece that at least like we were thinking about in terms of like what's contributing to this is this like discomfort with ambiguity. I don't know if this always was a thing for people, but I feel like our generation is so uncomfortable with the unknown and feels like we need to take control in every situation. And in dating, it feels like that's the one place where you can't take control. Mm, that's very true. Do you watch Emily in Paris? Oh, yeah. Do you remember when Sylvie said that to Emily? She's like, you Americans just can't deal with ambiguity or something like that. Yeah. And I thought about this as well. I think it's because, again, technology, a wonderful thing, has put us in control of so many aspects of our lives that we think 
dating has to fall in the same binary track as everything else, like ordering food and online shopping. Yeah, like we don't give it breathing room at all. So how do we counter that, right? How do we give it more breathing room? I think you gave people a really good example is where else can you slow down in your life so you can have more of that white space? And we can also think about it as just like simmering in the ambiguity sometimes and like maybe feeling it in your body because we're so disconnected from our bodies. If we know where that discomfort's coming from, we can actually address it through, guess what, massages <laughs> or just like mental breathing exercises, breath work, all kinds of meditations you can do just to that area of your body that's giving you discomfort. I remember we did an episode with Nikki Novo, who's one of our favorites about intuition. And she was saying that the reason why people are always like, oh, like, what is my intuition saying? Is because we want that yes or no. We can't sit with this unknown. And she was saying, like, how do we get comfortable staying in the unknown? And, you know, like, again, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier about like this speed and clock of like, I can't wait an extra hour for this person to text me back or, you know, the next and go on one more date to see if this could go somewhere. But if you can get comfortable with not having all the answers and like letting things play out a little more, like that's how things develop. Yeah. And here's one thing that just giving away a tad of our book, because we talk about this quite a bit. It's like, how do you simmer in the ambiguity of dating? is start making lists of things you have control over and things you don't have control over. This will help you make decisions. When you're waiting for that text back and you're feeling so uncomfortable about where you stand with this person, ask, what's in my control? Okay, I can text this person, ask them what the plans are. And what's out of your control is whether what they're going to say back and when they're going to say it back. All right, then you know what to let go. Right. So I want to go into, you know, what we can actually do about this. Obviously, we gave a few tips along the way, but like, what do we do to stop feeling like everything needs to go at lightning speed and just be a quick yes or no, instantaneous? But before we do, let's take a quick pause to hear from some of our sponsors. As the crisp fall air rolls in and the leaves begin to change, don't rely only on pumpkin to spice up your life. Embrace the natural power of cannabis this fall with Vaya. Whether you're lounging by the fire or exploring new adventures, Vaya's premium federally legal cannabis products are your perfect companion. Farmed and crafted with care in the U.S. and trusted by over half a million customers, Vaya has a product for everyone. Vaya just launched their high THCA flower and brand new flavors for the THCA vape slime. So you have more options than ever to blaze your own trail. You've all heard me talking also about their gummies. My favorite is the high love gummy that will awaken your senses and increase blood flow. I absolutely love it for pretty much every occasion. So if you are over 21 years of age, head to viahemp.com and use the code datable to receive a 15% off. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. This fall, enhance your everyday with Vaya. Does anyone else feel like there are so many distractions in the world and it's just so hard to focus? Anyone who knows me knows I can't function without my morning coffee, but lately it's not doing it for me. I'll still hit a wall by 2 p.m. and my mind felt foggy and I was just stressed out. UA has been telling me about Magic Mind, which is a mental performance shot that she's seen at Air One, Sprouts, and some other high-end grocery stores. So when they came in as a partner, I had to do their seven-day challenge. In just a few days, I noticed a huge difference, feeling more focused, clear, and calm all day. I always like to make sure I know what's going in my body, so I was glad to see that it's not a quick fix. This formula was created with doctors, perfected over 10 years, and designed for long-term mental performance. But the best part is, if you don't like it, you can get a full refund for 100 days after your purchase, no question asked. Right now, get up to 48% off your first subscription or 20% off one-time purchases with code DATABLE at checkout. Go to magicmind.com slash DATABLE and experience the magic for yourself. That's magicmind.com slash DATABLE. 
Do you like to be in the know of what's really happening with celebrity gossip? Do you like to hear about the drama happening on reality shows before the shows even air? If you're not listening to cocktails and gossip yet, the time is now. I'm obsessed with this podcast because each week, B and Amanda, the host of the podcast, bring you the tea on reality TV and the craziest celebrity blinds from their website, Bravos and Cocktails. You know, I've been on a real Bravo binge lately, so this podcast is the perfect compliment and trust us, they do not hold back. Listen and you'll have some unfiltered tea to spill at your next dinner party or in your group chat. Pop culture lovers, Bravo lovers, and people who just can't get enough gossip, this is a podcast you should definitely check out. And who knows, you might hear something from Cocktails and Gossip first before you hear it anywhere else. Scandaval, anyone? Listen to the weekly Cocktails and Gossip podcast wherever you get your podcasts. What do we do about this now that we've laid it down? How do we slow our roll a little? Just don't give up. There's things to do. Just don't give up. I think this baby is a yes mentality is so important. Mm -hmm. I think just especially in today's world, if you are using dating apps, realizing that you just cannot know from a dating app who someone is, and even from a first date, let's be honest, you still don't know who they are. We were talking about this in a lot of episodes that you just have a glimmer into who they are, like a small slice. Mm -hmm. Like how do we start making more of a second date default that if we had enough fun, they were attractive enough, good enough. It's not settling, Mm -hmm. but it is this like, I'm going to keep going with this. And of course, if you don't feel it growing, the attraction, the connection, then it's time to bounce. But at least it lets something build a little further than what we're doing today. Really prioritize connection over whatever future notions you have about a relationship or romantic connection with someone. So if you can prioritize connection, then where are areas of your life time-wise that you can deprioritize? For example, spending hours swiping (laughs) may not be building connection. So in the 30 minutes you're saving from swiping, add those 30 minutes to a date so you can get to know this person longer for 30 minutes. That's true because you're not wasting time net net. You're just yeah. prioritizing the connection bit. I like that. Yeah. I think for getting ahead of yourself, the reality check of I've known this person for an hour, <laughs> even if you've known them for a month, I've known them for four hours, like putting it into that term. That really helped me because I was so, so guilty of this. And I remember like when I met my partner, I was able to come out of it a bit. And I remember like meeting up with one of my best friends and her being like, oh, like, what do you think is going to happen? Like, how's this going to progress? And I was just like, I had a really good time and he seemed super nice and fun and we enjoyed our conversation. And, you know, if it goes somewhere, it goes somewhere. And if it doesn't, like, I'll find someone else that goes somewhere. So I think just like getting into that mode of like, it was good, I'm not taking the excitement away, but also like, I don't know what's happening in this person's life. I don't know who else they're dating. I don't know what's going on. That helps you be a little more realistic of what this could be. Yes. I find it really helpful that when you think you're getting ahead of yourself is to say it out loud. Yeah. Tell a friend, tell a close relative. I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself. Can you just check me here? I like that. What am I thinking? Because we do get ahead of ourselves when we just bottle it in and it becomes this fantasy we live in. Yeah. And I think like we got a few comments on this on Instagram and Facebook and I agree with it. It's like we're not saying to like have no fantasy or like no excitement and hope. Like there is something, you know, romantic about being like, oh, I think this could be something. We don't want to say like, become like a cold-hearted robot that has no emotions. But I think especially if you tend to do this, just dialing it back a little, you're still going to have that excitement. Like that's not going away. You're just tempering like your expectations a bit. Right. It's like if you're watering a plant from when it's a bulb or seed or whatever. I don't know. I obviously don't know anything about plants. (laughs) But you're not like, oh, it's going to be this tree tomorrow or it's going to have these big big flowers tomorrow. You get excited about every little progress that your plant is making. Oh, it grew a little bit and the bulb came out and like it started flowering. I think getting ahead of ourselves is picturing this like 
future plant it's going to become. Yeah. But we can get excited about the little things that are happening, like, oh, I see the potential of this seed. I see the potential of its growth. We can give ourselves full permission to get excited about that. I like that analogy a lot, too, because then it allows you to appreciate the moments as they're happening. So instead of being like, are we going to be in a relationship? You're like, I really enjoyed this third date with them and getting to know them and going to the sushi spot or wherever we went. Like, I think just savoring all those like memories is so important. You know, like the beginning of a relationship is so special. Like you have these butterflies, these like flutters, right? Like this just like feeling of like being over the moon. Like, why would you want to fast track that? You're not going to get it back. You're not going to get it back. Oh, my gosh. Yes. All those people who've been in relationship for a really long time, they always reminisce about those early days because everything is new. Everything's a first time. But guess what? After the first time, you never get that first time back again. I think the other like tangible PSA I want to make is like... (laughs) Can we stop being like Nancy Drew? Do you remember Nancy Drew books, like the detective from our childhood? Do you remember these? Well, I think it's so funny because I know you've referenced this before. I came to the States in 89, so I think I kind of miss (laughs) the Nancy Drew period because I came in third grade. I think I was like at the tail end of it. But I, in theory, I understand who she is. So, yes, I get the reference. But for anybody who's like super young, Young. they have no idea who Nancy Drew is. I was obsessed with Nancy Drew. She was always on the case. Like there was like this whole book series like about all of her adventures. Uh She had to crack the code, you know, she would just go undercover for everything. And I always feel like we do that in our dating lives. Yes. Like we just want to like, again, not waste any time, get to the end, fast track. So we're like reading every last line in a dating profile and making assumptions, Mm -hmm. you know, just cracking the code. Yeah. Like these texts to our friends of like, well, do you think that like they're cute? Like in this photo, they look cute. But in this one, like they, I don't know, their hat's kind of weird or their outfit's odd. Like, do you think it's worth my time? It's like, no one knows. This is not worth your time. Yeah, I know. Because so much of what we naturally want to do is crack the code on who someone is just based on the little things that we know about them. And that becomes problematic because we jump to conclusions. We think we've solved a mystery. And when we show up on that date, they end up not being who (laughs) we think (laughs) most of the time will not be who we think they are. We get disappointed. But guess who brought on that disappointment? It's Nancy Drew. (laughs) (laughs) I actually think this is the biggest mistake people could make in dating, of just getting so hung up before the date on, like, analyzing the situation. Because one, this is what burns you out. This is what makes dating so freaking miserable that you just need to get out. And that's, again, feeds into expectation of love on demand and just wanting to, like, fast track to the end because you don't want to do it anymore. It's so painful. If we were actually using our time, again, redefining and repairing our relationship to dating, we were spending our time feeling like that energy of meeting new people, the connection, even if it's not our forever person, it would make everything a heck lot more enjoyable. Oh, it's so true. I'm embarrassed to say this, but I used to approach dating like collecting evidence versus a discovery process. Mm. So everything I would see about this person, one example is before going on a date with this guy who I knew through friends, I just didn't know much about him. I pulled up all of his Facebook photos and tried to piece together clues of who he is. Like one picture, he had a picture he took in front of like a floor to ceiling window. So I'm like, okay, this guy lives in a high rise and must be a really fancy building. And then there was like another picture of him, like there was an Instapot on the counter. I'm like, he must have had a girlfriend at one point who bought an Instapot, you know, just trying to piece together these clues when I could have been more curious and just more of a, yeah, like try to discover who this person is and not go into every Facebook album there ever existed for him. And you would have spent the same amount of time, but you actually would have been getting the benefits of like a conversation with someone. And you know what, Julie, when I finally met him, he was not nothing like what I thought he would be. So you double wasted your time. yeah? Double wasted. I mean, I was like, where's the Instapot in your kitchen? Where's the floor to ceiling window in your home? 
you live in a shack. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like all these conclusions I drew about him. When if I didn't do that Nancy Drew just like evidence piecing process, it would have been a lovely date. I would have liked to get to know him. Yeah, and I think that the connection could have actually gone somewhere. And I think that's what's happening is that we're cutting connections so quickly or using our time in the wrong places in order to shortcut that we're just not effectively dating and connecting with new people. No, we're not. So how do we just like focus on the process, enjoy the journey of dating? How do we find this process enjoyable again? So many of you have told us it's no longer fun, it's exhausting, and you're drained. (laughs) There's no way you could approach dating well in that mindset. It's just not set up for success at all. No, not at all. So there are three questions that you can ask yourself that will help you enjoy the process even more. It's like, what am I learning about myself in getting to know this person? How do I feel around this person? And what side does this person bring out in me? And once you've gone on enough dates, you'll have kind of a North Star of what you want these answers to be right? I'm learning that I can expand my heart. I'm learning that I can overcome my fears. I'm feeling my best around this person. I'm feeling empowered by this person. The side this person brings out in me is like this childish, really fun, silly side, which I really love. You'll start to see what are the learnings you want to be having with the people you go on dates with. That way you can vet them based on those answers and not based on some fantasy you've created. Yeah. And I think if you're in this mindset, then it never becomes a waste of time. Like no date becomes a waste of time because you're always learning. I think it's when we have this like all or nothing approach. That's when we swing on the two sides of the spectrum that we talked about earlier of just dismissing people immediately or going all in with people that we don't have enough information on. Yes. If you search for it, if you ask the question, what did I learn from this person? after every date you go on, you will have an answer because we will all be able to learn from everybody. But if you ask the question, was this a waste of time? Yes, (laughs) your answer is going to be yes, because that's what you were looking for. So start looking for the right things from now on. That's a good takeaway. I think my last takeaway of this is just, you know, slowing down often helps speed us up. Yeah. We think that like by taking the break or by, you know, giving that person the extra date or something, then we're actually like wasting time or not using our time efficiently. But having that extra clarity or letting things develop a little more, like that's what could make all the difference in the world. So like if you went on a date with someone, it felt okay, but not great. And then the next date was wonderful. I will say with my partner, like, The first date was not fireworks in the sense that I like knew immediately. Mm -hmm. I knew that I had a good time. I knew this was someone that I enjoyed talking to. I knew that like I would see them again if they wanted to see me again, if it was mutual. And then the more we spent time together, the more things built and developed. And then it became so clear that this was the right person for me. But I'm glad I gave it that extra time each time. We hear this over and over with people that have met their person. I still love your story about taking the bus because maybe that is the ultimate takeaway (laughs) is take the bus and dating. What does that look like? (laughs) If you think about it, if you're always like in Ubers and Lyfts, one is bad for the environment. Yes. And two, you don't know what kind of driver you're going to get. You don't know what kind of car you're going to get. You may not be happy, but you just know you want to get there as fast as possible. And if you don't, you get disappointed. You're setting yourself up for so many points of disappointment. If you take the bus, you're like, I don't know if it's going to get here on time. (laughs) I don't know if it's going to detour. I don't know if streets are closed. I have no idea who's going to be on this bus with me. At least I know this is better for the environment. At least I know this is getting me where I want to go eventually. Yeah. I can stop and enjoy the the scenery as I'm going. You're going to notice along the way different things about the route that you may have never noticed before. And maybe at some point you go, actually, I'm going to get off early because this looks interesting. This looks, yes, yeah, I kind of want to explore this. I never noticed this neighborhood before or this coffee shop before. Take the bus and dating. (laughs) 
We got to leave it there. Mic drop. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Vroom, vroom. I love this. This was such a good conversation. Hopefully, you know, this gay perspective of just the freaking environment we're in. Honestly, a lot of this is just the environment of life, the environment of dating. It all plays into each other. And like being aware is the first step in all of this. Clearly, we're going to keep going this season. We have a whole book that is dedicated to how do you get out of this endless maze of dating, knowing that there are things that are keeping you trapped. So howtobedateable.com, go pre-order. Like we've said, pre-orders go such a long way. This is what gets us on the bookshelves at different bookstores, gets us at the lists of Amazon so more people can see the book and become dateable. And then you'll just be in a more dateable environment. It's a win-win-win. So many wins. <laughs> and while you're pre-ordering our book, don't forget to give us a rating or review in Apple Podcasts. Just give us five stars in the body of your review. You can tell us how you are taking the bus and dating. <laughs> or just comment bus. bus. <laughs> we'll know exactly what you mean. <laughs> but that's a great place to give us some feedback as well. And you can also do this in Spotify or just old-fashioned way of emailing us, hello at datablepodcast.com. We do check our email every second of every day we do we're glued to it in this instantaneous world <laughs> it's instant it's instant <laughs> if we don't respond fast know that we're just taking the bus we're trying to slow down a little yes yes <laughs> we're taking the bus great okay we're gonna wrap up this episode and we'll see you all next week stay, stay dateable. Dateable. the dateable podcast is part of the frolic media network find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Datable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay datable. Stay datable.